Petersfield's Shine Radio. Hello, I'm Nani Needs. This is Petersfield's Shine Radio. This is Rise and Shine. And today's guest is Tosh Britton. And what is she? She's a divorce goddess. Well, we're going to talk about that one. I'm just reading from your website, Tosh. Your web, your divorce is about you, not your ex. If you want to thrive rather than survive through your divorce so it doesn't define the rest of your life, take a look around. And what I love about Tosh is that she's all about kindness for conflict and her formula for that is what we're going to talk about today. Hi, Tosh. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> I was giggling a bit, thinking, oh, my goodness, what are you going to read off the website? But it's, it's OK. It's yeah. still reading pass? well. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and I've I've made all the right you know corrections and I put the right words down so that reflects it all. So tell me about how you started as a divorce goddess first of all. Um, well, I had a moment at my kitchen table and um, I remember thinking, how am I going to pay my rent? What's going to happen? And I started looking around to see if there was any advice. And this was back in sort of two thousand and fourteen. And this is because you yeah. were getting divorced. Yeah, and I was. Yeah, that's why this moment started. Exactly. And it was kind of rumbling on for a little bit because um, I just decided I had this sort of moment, a realisation that I didn't want to have uh, an unkind divorce because uh, a couple of friends of mine were questioning me in in the kitchen going, you've got to go after your ex, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. And I remember feeling the sort of rising anxiety in the pick of my stomach thinking I just don't want to fight you know we're going through so much anyway emotionally and you know and the children trying to keep everything okay and I just thought I don't want to fight so I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna just put it out there and as an experiment I'm just going to throw kindness at it and just see what happens and just go with it and so I was sitting at my table thinking what am I going to do and I just thought uh I wonder if there are other people feeling like this and the only way to find out is by setting up a blog and starting to blog. So I just started blogging about it. Um, and then it got picked up by sort of TV. And I think the name kind of probably garnered a little attention. And then it just kind of went on from there. And now it's kind of grew up into a podcast and, and coaching business. So, yeah. So what inspired you to come up with the name Divorce Goddess? So um, our friend Nigella was around in the kitchen at some point. <laughs> is she a personal friend, time. Tosh? <laughs> no, no, she isn't. She isn't. But I just kind of, I quite like the way, I, I, I kind of like that sort of, I don't know, being your best person um, yeah, it's nice in the kitchen and keeping it real, you know, and not um, sending it off into the, the legal, you know, um, areas and straight away and just kind of owning yourself more, you know, being putting your own recipe for your divorce soup together if you want to kind of tie it into the, you know, the kitchen goddess. Um, and I just sat there and I thought, oh, should I do it? Should I not? And I just thought, oh, just do it. What have you got to lose? You know, divorce is the start of the rest of your life um I believe anyway and and I just thought I'll start as I mean to go on and be bold and brave and you know go for it <laughs> so I did <laughs> well, that started in what 2014 yeah yeah so we're now in 2022 wow you've come a long way so uh, what I wanted to yeah. pick your brains about was the formula mm. for what we should do about going about all of this if you're in that some of I mean some of your tips are you know I've, are relevant to everyday mm. life and moving forward in a, in a January when everything's new beginnings. So what yeah. was what's the first thing we should think about doing? So I think one of the main problems that can lead to conflict is the fact that we have, you know, it's basically like I kind of liken it to ending up down a certain young lady's sort of like Alice's rabbit hole and ending up in this whole complete new world where nothing is as it seems and you know the whole rug has been taken out from your feet and you're just thinking what is going on you know we've got to you know at a time of our life we've got to move house we've got to um, manage children we've got to be you know relationships with family members you know the legal part I mean it's just it's just it's very scary and and I think we can kind of forget our true north and who we really are in the whole sort of newness of it all and the fear and uh, whatever else so my first tip is setting an intention right I'm all about 
you writing yourself and literally sitting down and writing yourself a letter as to how you want to feel at the end of the process well and through it as well so for example you might want to talk about things like you know how do I want to feel when I see my ex at children's pickups and drop-offs do I want to manage my well-being what you know in a good way to remember to take deep breaths and that I'm going to show up and be present and I'm going to listen and I'm not going to show up with anger um well I'm not going to show up hungover as a, a client just mentioned to me this morning you know the ex turned up <laughs> yeah. completely hungover and late well that's just not going to do it is it it's just no. you know, it's a recipe for disaster um so and and just sort of you know how do you want to feel in the future if you have children especially is uh, and this can go for you know whatever you're applying in life it's like how at some point you might have to see your ex at a family wedding or your children's weddings or you know um certain birthdays you know do you want to dread it do you want your children and picking up on the the sort of the bad energy if you like between the pair of you do you want to walk out going actually do you know what I did it with grace and dignity and we don't always get it right you know but just in the main to be very um conscious aware mindful of how we want to feel at the end of it or do we want to be one of those people you meet and you go oh I got a divorce and they just go into that their energy just sinks and they just kind of go Ugh. the best thing is to set a a, a positive intention with the list mm. of things that you have just mentioned. So being your best self every time yeah. you, in, you go out to do things. Yeah. Um, Tosh, that, when that's great. When you answer that text, you know, when you email, sit on the email, sit on the text, just, you know, just commit to having a kind of divorce. And you can give this to your ex or your soon-to-be ex and say, listen, this is my commitment to the process to having a kind of divorce experience. And in your experience, if you are... Mm. I mean, this applies to men and women, doesn't it? So it, yeah. it's not just advice for women. Have you experienced that people actually say this to their partner? And do they listen? <laughs> so you can say it, but do they um, listen? Or is it just the fact that you've put it out there? What's your experience? I, I think the fact that you put it out there and I think it's I think what is really important is to doing what you've always done is not going to you know we say is just not going to produce anything different so do something differently just trust that do you know what I'm going to commit to it and you've you've kind of set that you know that intention to go right this is what is going to happen when I've, I'm feeling challenged or I'm being I'm feeling I'm attacked or whatever and you can't stop your ex from saying doing thinking what they want you can't do that but you have absolute ownership of yourself you can control how you behave exactly and you don't end up in their whirlpool of drama and anger and whatever else you can choose to say right I'm going to stay out of it. And your intention is like this commitment to yourself. Great. First. We have to stop there. But stay with me, Tosh. I'll be back after uh, in about 10 minutes to continue this conversation. And indeed, this is the second part of the conversation I had with Tosh on my Rise and Shine show that was broadcast on the 21st of January. This is Petersfield Shine Radio. I'm Noni Needs and I am back with Tosh Britton talking about setting an intention um, for your divorce. And indeed, your life, it applies to your life. Hello, Tosh. Hello, Noni. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. So that was great, Tosh. Um, mm. Now, I thought we'd go through that setting that intention list because maybe the listeners didn't get it the first time. So what do you do to set your intention for having a great divorce with kindness, as you suggested? Take a piece of paper and then what? What's the first thing we should do? Yeah. So I would say make yourself a nice cup of tea. <laughs> Take a couple good. of deep breaths. <laughs> You'll get your, you know, sit somewhere cosy. Um and you know it's you know this is a big kind of declaration or commitment to yourself first of all um and then to your children and then to your ex so um it's kind of like quite an important document to if you want to call it a document moving forwards so first of all just sit for a couple of minutes you know just just close your eyes just imagine take this couple of deep breaths maybe if you want to sort of settle and and then just tune in to how what is your best life going through a divorce and beyond look like what and visualize how do it you want to feel it yeah visualize it you know visualize yourself um for example uh, at children's pickups and drop-offs do you both want to be able to say hello to each other without any snarky looks or comments um so the children feel comfortable yeah so they're not it's not a tennis match where they're going back and forward watching the reactions yeah Exactly. And, you know, that that's what you do have control over. 
or at least one of you does, even if your ex doesn't want to, you you can be that, you know, that grounded person. So do you want to be, you know, do you want to commit to this? Um, do you want to commit to being able to go to your children's sort of big birthdays, um, uh, events like weddings, birth, deaths, mar marriages in the future and be able to have a civil conversation and say hello to each other and just m make it about your children rather than yourself? That's really yeah. um, looking forward. You know, you're, you're just at this emotional point where you're having a divorce and all of a sudden you're thinking how I want to behave when my children are getting married. You know, they could be yeah. wee, wee little banes. That's a... That's a really good tip because you probably wouldn't be emotionally in that place, really. It's hard, though. You just think, you know yeah. what? This is, you know, and people go, oh, I just want my divorce to be over. If you've got children, right, your children, your divorce is never going to be over. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. You're bad absolutely news. right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a kicker, but it's the truth. And... You know, that's why I think it's so important that this sort of document, and you can add to it, you can write it, you can, do, you know, out again if you need to, but just really setting an intention. You know, for example, like not answering a text, being responsive rather than being reactive. So you don't immediately text back or you don't immediately send an email back if you've been triggered. Just sit on it, you know, go for a walk, get outside, take the dog, whatever you got to do, and then come back to it. You're so right, because that's really, really excellent advice. Because I think we live in a society where it's definitely the younger generation, if they get a text or they have to respond immediately, and that, you know... Yeah. You, that's great that you're giving... ask you like what's a text <laughs> it's like not even a text that's even too slow isn't it these days <laughs> yeah it's like instagram or snapchat yeah. response or a photograph of, it's like no what you need to do is take your time you <laughs> you're giving the listeners permission um tosh to yeah. like not respond to something instantly which is mm. so is so important thank you for that yeah that's right. And the thing is, your mind will learn. I call them the divorce mind monkeys. I think we're going to speak about, about them at some point yeah. uh, in this series. But, you know, the divorce mind monkeys, they're going to be, we got to take back control of them. And I'm going to be sharing some tips on how to Yeah, do we're going to be going on to that one next week. So let's finish the intention list. Have we covered mm. everything? How do you want to feel? Okay, so write down how do you actually want to feel? Do you want to feel like you were the best person through this? you know you were the bigger person you um were very mindful of your uh reactions you because the thing is what you don't want to do is just get into this place where you lose it and i'm not saying you can't lose it because you know it's a divorce and it's probably the most second most painful life event you can go through after losing somebody so you know we shouldn't kind of make it less than what it is but um feeling that guilt because you know you you sent off an email which then created a you know a whole heap of whatever is you're just going to beat yourself up and you know you're going through it anyway so just being aware of you know your actions and you know responding and you know you, you want to be cool about it you want your kids to be okay in the future how about what uh, the other things that you want in your life about yourself you want to be able to date you want to be able to meet somebody in the future and not be dragging around all this emotional anger baggage and you know they said that there's that very famous quote that's sort of doing the rounds quite a lot about um you know holding anger is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die i love that quote i love it it's so, it? so true good, isn't it? <laughs> It's so good. And so, you know, if you're in any doubt about why it's okay to be really angry and stay angry with your ex, you know, it only affects you. It's you're not so... affecting them. And you're holding it inside you. And yeah, do you really want that? Thank you, Tosh. So, Tosh, what are we going to talk about next? These mind monkeys next week. Yeah, the divorce mind monkeys, the DMMs, they're going to feature very heavily in my book that's in the editing at the moment. So um, I want to talk about divorce mind monkeys. So these are those really unhelpful thoughts telling you to do things um, when Ooh. you know you shouldn't, but you just can't help yourself. Well, I look forward to that. Thanks, Tosh. And t I look Pleasure. forward to talking about it next week. Yeah, I look forward to it. Bye, Nanny. That was Tosh Britton, and she'll be back with me next week, as you just heard, to discuss the next episode in our series, The Divorce Mind Monkeys. Queen.
Queen of the Borders. I wanted to get a head start because I don't think I did the previous year. King of the allotments. So I've always been keen on gardening, forever. Petersfield Gardening Royalty. Growing together on Shine Radio. Give it a go this year, you never know, and we're here on hand if you have any questions. Growing together with Claire Venice and Steve Amos. New every month and always online at shineradio.uk.